Hi there everybody and welcome to this video. Um, so today we're going to talk about general ledger budgets or GL budgets. Um, so you can use budgets in BC out of the box to budget against your general ledger and you can then later report on those GL budgets um, either within BC using financial reporting which we'll cover in another video or you can export the entries to Excel um, and report in there or you can use another reporting tool like Power BI, Jet to uh, look into BC and analyze your GL budgets. Um, so let's go ahead and start inputting a GL budget. So I'm just going to come up to the top here um, on my navigation menu, um, go to finance and I'm going to go to GL budgets. So this is the GL budget screen and very simply I can hit new to create a new GL budget. So I'm just going to give my budget a name and a description. And what else I can do on the GL budget screen here is I can assign some dimensions to my budget and you can see here the global dimension one and global dimension two values are already input as department and customer group. So they are there by default, um, but I can add up to four other budget dimensions if I wanted to. Um, so if you want to budget by one of the dimensions in your BC environment, you can easily add those in. As mentioned, your globals are there anyway, but you can add other dimensions in if you wish to. This is just a, a Cronus environment, so I've got my department and customer group, and we'll leave it as that for now. So once I've created the record, um, I can go in and say edit budget. And uh, bear in mind here, guys, I can have as many budgets as I want to. Um, but I'm just, I'm just going to go and edit, edit budget now for um, the 2024 budget. So if I say edit budget in the action bar here, this will bring up a new page um, which shows us our GL budget. Um, so the key area within this page is just the budget matrix section here where what we have is along the left hand side here we've got our chart of accounts. Um, so down the left hand side we've got our chart of account code, our number, and then we've got the chart of account um, name. And then we have a budgeted amount column which tells us the amount that's been budgeted against that particular GL code. Um, and then across the top the other columns are the periods that we wish to budget. Now I can change this screen a little bit here if I want to, so I can use the show as lines and show as columns to switch this around. So if I just drill into the show as lines here, you'll notice that I can choose business unit, customer group department, my global dimensions, or I can show period or GL account in there. And all this will do is if I say customer group here, is it will show me my customer groups here instead of my GL codes. That's because we changed this value here. But let me just change my lines back to GL count. And some of the other things that I can do is I can view by different um, periods. So here it's set to month currently, and for that reason, I have my months going along the top here. But if I want to, I can change this to day. I can change this to week, month, quarter, and so on. And as you can see, it's just updating the columns that we see here. So I guess this goes by sort of how we budget and uh, if you want to budget by quarter, you can set this value. If you want to budget by month, week, day, year or accounting period, you can set that there as well. But let's just switch back to month for now. Um, and the rounding factor, it's set to none right now, but you can use this to round up to the nearest one, the nearest 1,000 or the nearest 100,000. Um, and we can test that when we start putting some numbers in. And the show column name just switches the columns here to the month name. 
And then what we can start doing is we can start adding some filters in to also change the view that we have in the matrix here. So notice right now we've got April 2023, May 2023, June, July, August, etc. But if I want to, I can say 010124.31224. And what this will do is it will change the columns here that I have in the matrix. So I can use some other filters. I've got my GL account filter here, which looks up my chart of accounts. And I can choose a range of chart of accounts here if I only want to budget against, let's say, my expense accounts or my revenue accounts or particular accounts on my balance sheet. I can pick those and filter as I wish. So I'm just going to say cancel on that, but I just want to show you that I can also select a GL account category filter as well. So we've got GL account category field assigned on each of the accounts on the chart of accounts, and I can filter by those here as well. So if I just change this, for example, to assets, and it looks like I don't have any asset accounts in my chart of accounts right now, but I can use that where it's been assigned correctly to filter my accounts. And equally, I can use the income statement or balance sheet or blank filter there. And sorry, I think, yeah, that's why I didn't see um, any results earlier because I had my income statement filter set there and um, the assets, um, GL account category, sorry, comes from the balance sheet and that's why I didn't see any any um, any GL accounts there um, but here I can use the filter to either filter to accounts on my balance sheet on my income statement or I can view them all so we'll come back to the department and customer group and other dimension filters a little bit later on but Let's just start talking through putting some values into our GL budget for now. So if I want to input a value in here, I can literally just come to the relevant GL code here and start inputting numbers like this in the relevant column against the relevant month here. So here you can see I've input against GL account 10100 income services. 100 GBP into January 2024 and 100 GBP into February 2024. And I can drill down into these values. And where that takes me is to a page called GL Budget Entries, where we can see a full list of those entries. And I've got my GL account number, I've got my date, and I've got my amount. Notice I have no description, department code, or customer group code right now. And I can drill down the same way into January, but if I want to see all of the values for that particular GL code and this set of periods, what I can do is drill down into the budgeted amount here, and this shows me all of those values. So I've got the date, 1st of Jan 24, 1st of Feb 24, and both entries are for 100. Now, let's just say I wanted to budget against one of my global dimensions. Well, what I can do is let me remove these entries here. And this time, before inputting a value, what I'm going to do is insert a department filter. So I'm just going to say administration here. So we've added a department filter of ADM here into the budget screen. I can also add a customer group filter and one of my other dimension filters here if I wanted to. But what happens now when I start inputting that value is I can go 100, 100. So exactly the same as what we did before. But this time, if I drill down into the budgeted amount, you'll notice that we have a department code assigned. So everything looks the same, but we've got a department code here. 
Okay, so that is one of the ways that you can start inputting your budgets in BC. And just bear in mind, if I now remove this department filter, it will show me entries against all departments. So what I can do is I can add another filter here for production. And because we filtered by the production department, it's cleared my matrix. So I can say 100 and 100 again. And now if I clear that department filter, you'll see it's summarized or amalgamated those entries. So I've got 200 in Jan 2024 and 200 in Feb 2024. And if I drill down into there, I've got my ADM entry and my prod entry. And bear in mind, it's got the minus 100 and the plus 100 because we removed those entries previously as well. OK, so that's how we can start inserting entries into our geo budget screen via the BC interface. Now, obviously, we can go about this in other ways. So I'm just going to remove these values. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say export to Excel from the action bar here. And what this will allow me to do is export a GL budget into Excel, which I can then import back into BC. And notice here in the dimension selection screen, I'm just selecting um, the department dimension, but I can have other dimensions here if I need to as well. And just the other fields here on the report request page, I've set the start date to the 1st of Jan 2024. I've set the number of periods to 12 and the period length was already set to one month. Now let me say OK. And what I will get is a Excel spreadsheet, which I'm just going to open. And all we're going to do on our Excel spreadsheet here is we are going to edit some of the values. So I'm just going to clear these for now. And what I'm going to do is add a department code against GL code 10100. And I'm just going to budget for 10 GBP in January 24 and 10 GBP in Feb 24. And you'll notice here, guys, we've got multiple lines for 10100, which is totally fine. I mean, I can also insert a new record here and copy this down as well to add another line for 10100. And I'm going to say purchase 10 and 10 as well. So obviously I've added entries here for different department codes, but I guess what you could do is send multiple versions of this same spreadsheet to your different department heads and they can input the budgets for that particular um, department as they saw fit. And once we've input that budget into um, Excel, I just deleted those two blank lines, what we can go ahead and do is just import that back into BC. So I'm just going to say save on this file. I'm going to close it down. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say import from Excel. Now, this is really important here, guys. We've got the budget name, which is set to 2024. We've got the option here set to replace entries. So you can either choose to replace the entries in your existing GL budget, or you can add to the entries in your existing GL budget. So that's really important based on what you want to do. This time, we'll just say replace entries. And then we've got a description field, which just allows us to type something to say these were imported at this particular time. 
um, will just give us an indication of what they were imported for. So I'm going to say import test for demo. And when I say OK here, I'm going to say yes. And it will tell me the GL budget entry table has been successfully updated with four entries. So let me say OK. And again, if I drill down into Jan 2024 here, you'll see the last two entries that we have here say import test for demo. It's for department code purchase and 10. Import test for demo, department code sales and amount is 10. And you'll notice here, guys, that the other amounts have all been cancelled out. So that's how you can import a budget from Excel. And uh, just a few of the other things that we can do here um, is we can use the copy budget function, which we can use to copy um, existing GL entries or existing GL budget entries. So you can copy from your live data from the previous financial year, for example, using GL entry. If you wanted to copy from an existing budget, you could use copy from GL budget entry. Um, and there's a few other options here. So we can choose the copy from GL budget. Um, we can set a GL account number filter, a date filter. We can choose whether we want to include or exclude closing entries. They're the year end entries. Um, we can also copy dimensions. And here we can set the copy to budget. So I can drop down here and select the budget that we are copying to and the GL accounts within that budget that we want to copy to. So I can also set an adjustment factor, um, which is basically a percentage increase. So if I want to increase by 20%, I can say adjustment factor is 1.2. If I want to decrease by 20%, I can say the adjustment factor is 0 0.8. One means the entries stay the same. I can also select a rounding method. I don't have any set up in here right now, but I can round my values up and I can change the dates on my entries if I want to and compress the entries into a particular day, week, month or period here as well. So the copy GL budget report basically just allows you to copy entries from a GL entries the GL entries table or the GL budget entry table into a new budget. And I think that's everything that I wanted to run through on the GL budget functionality, guys. As I mentioned um, previously, we can use financial reporting in conjunction with GL budgets as well. Um, but that will be one that we cover in another video. Uh, I hope this was helpful and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you very much.